Hey everyone, welcome to another 360 in 360. And for this one, I actually want to talk about Azure Virtual WAN. I've had a lot of people request, look, what exactly is this thing? And I can really think about, forgetting about anything in Azure for a second. If I'm an organization, I might have multiple locations. I can think about, I have some really big locations. Maybe that's a, a great big data center. Maybe it's a big user population. I might have multiples of these. And then I might think about, well, I have maybe branch locations. So I have these kind of smaller branch locations in, in kind of different areas. Maybe I even have individuals. In the past, this was maybe kind of those road warrior type people that are constantly out on the road. Today, it might be more and more people just working from home. So I have these different types of users, different types of user populations. And as an organization, well, I want to connect these things together, but I also want to give them maybe connectivity to the internet. And so historically, our solution would be, well, maybe it's a, an MPLS. So I can think about kind of, I have this MPLS network that these major locations are connected to. So that's um, basically private connectivity, and it's kind of a 2.5 layer labeling the packets and gives me this connectivity. Now for those branch locations, well, I'd have to do something else. Maybe for example, I, I run a VPN service at one or multiple locations and they would kind of connect in via VPN. So this would be a site to site VPN connection. So I'm connecting that IP space to this IP space, then these are connected. For the individual users, well, via a point to site, they would then get that connectivity as well. But I'm having to kind of host that VPN connection again. These are over the internet. So I'm using that internet cloud and I have also this kind of dedicated connectivity. And then if you throw in the cloud, so I can think about, well, okay, so now I've got kind of, let's say I've got different Azure regions. We'll say we're using two Azure regions and they're obviously connected on that great big Azure network. It's kind of one of the biggest in the world. And I want to extend out to that. Now there's different ways we could do that. That could be kind of a site to site. I could do a VPN connection to gateways in Azure. We can imagine I've got kind of VNets up in Azure that I have resources running in. Maybe I've used Express Route. Now there's obviously going to be places where this Microsoft network is extended out into carrier neutral facilities. They're called Meet Me's for Express Route purposes. Maybe that actually becomes a node off of the MPLS. So the MPLS now can actually go and connect up into that meet me and extend the connectivity. Maybe I have a dedicated kind of connection, um, an actual line, not an MPLS, just a, a private connection via a meet me as well. So there's different types of connectivity I could kind of have there to enable me to kind of stretch those environments. So I have those kind of different options, but I'm managing all of that. I have to enable those types of peering. If these VNets want to talk to each other, well, there's yet again more connectivity I have to consider and transitive routing. There's a whole bunch of complexity to this. Now, this MPLS, you've probably heard of SD-WAN. More and more companies are looking at this SD-WAN type solution. And it's designed around the idea of having this kind of central policy um, routing engine that will automatically go and populate appliances at my different locations and provide the connectivity. Very often the way it actually does that is, is actually kind of over the internet. So I can think about, well, there's the kind of internet cloud as well, but SD-WAN could also use things like MPLS. But in the SD1 world, well, hey, look, we, we all have these kind of appliances at the various locations. And via the internet, we have these encrypted tunnels that create this kind of mesh connection up through everything. 
So this SD-WAN is gaining more and more popularity. But I'm relying on the internet here. I'm relying on the carrier and the quality of that connectivity between them. So where exactly is this Azure Virtual WAN playing? And we can really take this exact same picture here and we'll just kind of transpose it over to a clean canvas. So we'll draw those same, hey, I've got these two major locations. Again, I could have many, many more. And we'll think about, well, we'll have those same smaller branch locations. And we've got those individual machines spread in different places. Those same kind of combinations of connectivity requirements. And then we have the same cloud. So we have the idea that, hey, yeah, there's, there's Azure regions and there's regions all throughout the world. And once again, the important point here is those regions are connected to this massive Microsoft backbone network. Now that Microsoft backbone network, yes, it connects to regions together. And I previously drew all the meet me locations where I can have things like express route but there were many, many other network edge locations. I can think about there were all these network edge kind of points of presence locations. And what these are used for is these are all kind of those carrier neutral facilities where you can go and connect to all the different kind of connectivity vendors of the world, the AT&Ts, the Verizons, the T-Mobiles, the carriers, you name it. They have these almost direct connectivity to as many providers as possible. That enables, hey, if I'm using X service provider, hopefully I don't have to then go via another service provider to quickly get onto that Azure backbone, the Microsoft backbone network. I want to be able to get onto it as quick as possible. So the point of the, the Azure virtual WAN, I just call it VWAN going forwards, is we want to leverage this. If I'm going to this SD-WAN methodology, well, who better than to leverage that backbone network? So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create, I'm just gonna change the color a little bit for a second. We're gonna create a virtual WAN instance. Typically, we're only ever gonna want one virtual WAN. Um, a virtual WAN is kind of like a security delineation. If I had another virtual WAN instance, that would be completely separate in terms of connectivity from any other VWAN instance. So I'm probably gonna have one. And the way this manifests itself is I create hubs. And I create hubs in regions where I want connectivity. I have locations there, maybe I have a big user population there. So I'm gonna put a hub where I want to provide connectivity. So let's say, hey, I'm gonna create a hub here in this region. I'm going to create a hub over in this region as well. Now, the hub is a virtual network, and it's obviously certain types of gateways and connectivity and routers, but you don't see that. You do not see the virtual network. You can't put things in the virtual network. It's managed. What I see is the hub resource. So I say, hey, I want to deploy hubs to these regions. The hub is deployed, and then it's providing me that, that connectivity. Now, the whole point is this is managed. I'm not having to do anything. Now, there are two different SKUs of the Azure Virtual WAN. I can think about there's basic. Now, if I'm using basic, that is just site-to-site -site VPN. So I can think about here, well, yep, yeah, it's gonna give me that site-to-site -site connectivity. And so, hey, these branch locations, for example, Yes, over the internet, they're going to get to whatever network edges as close to them as possible. So it's going to quickly, it's kind of like hot potato uh, from the vendor's perspective. They're going to get it off and onto the Azure network, hot potato, as quickly as possible. And then we try to keep it as long as we can. So we're kind of cold potato. We want to keep it on our network until we have to offload it to someone else. So absolutely, hey, yeah, I can, I can site to site VPN in and connect to that hub. So this is a, a kind of site to site, as would this one go to its closest network edge location, and then they can talk to each other. 
So that would give me connectivity between different sites. It would also give me connectivity if I also had maybe VNet here. So I had a VNet, maybe I had multiple VNets. I can peer them to that managed virtual network. So now they could get to resources in those virtual network, but it's not doing any transit. What I mean is these VNets, yes, could talk to these resources, but those VNets cannot talk to each other. So the basic SKU is not providing any transit between virtual networks, and it's only the site-to-site -site VPN. Now you may ask yourself, okay, well, why would I bother with virtual WAN then? I can just deploy a site-to-site -site VPN gateway in a virtual network. You can, but I think it maxes out at something like 30 tunnels or 15 active-active connections. The Azure Virtual WAN scales up to 2,000 tunnels or 1,000 active-active connections. So the scale is just way, way higher than I could do with a regular site-to-site -site, um, VPN gateway that I could create. So there's a the mass difference in the scale. But then what we really move on to is then there's the standard SKU. And what the standard SKU adds is, well, again, we, we kind of talked about, well, we have this site to site. And obviously you still have that with standard. Standard is basic and then other stuff. But standard then adds point to site. So, hey, great. Um, I could now have those users kind of connecting to their closest point of presence and get to the point of site. So these could now connect in. But it also adds express route. So I'm just going to do XR. So now this location, for example, hey, maybe there's actually, I could think about, well, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a meet me location and I've extended my connectivity out to that, so great. I shall pick this one. So I've extended my network, so I'm now using express route. So I could have an express route connection up into here to add into that hub. This one, oh yeah, it, it's doing express route up into here as well. Now, today, this express route connection, this is premium. And I have to have something called global reach. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But I can have all of those different things as part of my configuration now. So that's what standard gives me. Standard is also giving me transit between the VNets. So those VNets that typically couldn't talk to each other with standard, they now can talk to each other they're going to have that capability to automatically have that transit. So I can have VNets all over the place that are connected to the hub. The VNets can talk to each other. I could actually have VNets over here. Because the point of this is what it's going to give me is these hubs with standard, well, they essentially connect to each other over that network. And what it's going to give me is this any to any capability. So this major location here, well, it's going up via an express route gateway and then kind of bounces via the site to site gateway and can go and get to that location. This machine that's connected in, well, it bounces via its gateway to get to any location. This site over here can go and get to this VNet because that VNet is connected to the hub. That VNet can go over to that VNet. It's any to any. I'm not going to draw all the lines in, but any connection, be it point to site, site to site, express route, can talk to any other connection, can talk to any VNet. There's one slightly different path. I'm drawing all of these bouncing via the hub bouncing via those gateways, the express route, the site to site, the point to site. If these are both express route, and I drew this kind of global reach, it's inefficient to make them go via the gateway. 
Express Route global reach enables connectivity just on the raw backbone between different Express Route circuits. So if I have different Express Route circuits connected via Azure Virtual WAN, when they talk to each other, they actually won't go via the hub. They'll actually take a more efficient path. They will get onto the backbone, but then just go straight down. So Express Route to Express Route, while still managed by the Azure Virtual WAN in terms of that connectivity, they're not going to bounce by the hub. It is totally inefficient. It doesn't buy me anything. They are going to bounce using global reach. And I'm drawing all of these connections in. There are appliances. There's a huge slew of different partners that provide appliances that I can put down in my location that will go and integrate with Azure Virtual WAN. I drew Express Route and point to site and site to site as these kind of routing mechanisms within the hub. Well, there are actually now third parties that can actually drop NVAs into that hub from the marketplace, like Barracuda has one. And then maybe it has a Barracuda location over here running a certain type of appliance that can go and connect in and manage that connectivity as well. So it is extensible. So yes, there's, there's appliances that I can put in locations that will make it easy to connect to Azure Virtual WAN. But now vendors can even put their own appliances up in the hub that maybe use a different type of VPN technology, whatever it is. Also, Express Route, if I want to, it can do an encryption over that Express Route. It will actually create kind of, uh, there's a network here. It will create a IPsec encrypted tunnel over the Express Route into the hub. So I can even do encryption over Express Route if I wanted to. So there's, there's a huge amount of capability there, but it's really just about providing me this great connectivity on my environment using that Azure backbone. And I really pay for, it's built on an hourly based on the connection and kind of that, that scale unit it requires. You can go and look at the pricing page that kind of walks through how I pay for the service. I can make these secure. So I can have a secured hub what it essentially does if it's a secured hub is it puts um, Azure Firewall kind of in here and I can pick it on a per hub basis and obviously gives me that enhanced security um, through the Azure Firewall. So that's it kind of in a nutshell. It's designed to really provide that huge scale connectivity between all of the different locations I might have and all of my Azure resources. It's providing that transit um, for any VNets I have. So I hope that was useful if it was. Um, as always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And until the next video, take care.